In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add the wishlist functionality to your WooCommerce store for free and very easily. I'm Andrew and let's get started. So here I have a store that is built using the Hello theme from Elementor. Also, I have my pages and also the header design with the pro version of Elementor. I'm saying this because I'm going to show you how you can easily integrate this a plugin with the Elementor Hello theme. Now, this wishlist plugin that I'm just going to show you works with any kind of theme and any kind of page builder, but it also works greatly with Elementor. So to get us started, I'm just going to bring my admin panel and plugins and add new and search for MC wishlist. Now, this is the plugin I'm talking about. As you can see, it has very good reviews and the installation number is uh, relatively low and that's because it's a new plugin and it has been recently listed in the WordPress repository. So it's not as old as some other wishlist plugins that are available in the market. So now I can just activate it. And the first time that you activate it, you get this wizard that allows you to set this plugin up. I'm just going to ignore this wizard because all of these options are available in the setting. And also you can bring this wizard anytime you want from the setting. So I'm just going to click on no and not ready now. And now uh, we have this MC wish list. But if I visit my store, you can see that we have this little heart icon available to us. So this plugin is working out of the box. You have a complete wishlist functionality without any configuration. And now if I just click on add to wishlist or this heart icon, you can see that I get this alert and the product is added to my wishlist. And now if I just click on it, you can see that I have this my wishlist section in my WooCommerce my account page. So it's actually adding a section to your WooCommerce. My account is using the same style and that's really great. So here you can see all of your products that you have added to your wish list and each user can simply manage their products. They can simply visit and see their products. They can remove each product if they want to. They can batch remove or batch add to cart and all of these features are available from here. So this is the default out of the box working of this plugin without any configuration. But the good news is that you can change all important parts of this plugin. So if I just click on MC wishlist, of course, we do not want to see the wizard, but rather the settings. So here, we just have to ignore this fast setup and rather bring the settings. So here in the global setting, you can see that we have some options. For example, we can set the condition for removing the item. So by default, it's set to do not remove, meaning that your items are not removed automatically when you purchase them or when you add them to your cart, then of course, we have some other options here, for example, redirect to the cart, which automatically redirects user to the cart when they click on add all to cart. Now, these options all are grayed out because these are only available in the premium version. I will talk about the premium version and show you the features that you get in the premium version. But for now, let's just ignore these options. Then, of course, we have some more advanced options for caching and URL and uh, live support chat. So you have all of these options now. Uh, we are not going to talk about them. You can just work with them, but know that it just works greatly with any kind of cache plugin and you do not get any kind of problem. And finally, you can export and import setting to and from your plugin. And this is the general section that you have available. Then, of course, we have appearance. So you can customize the appearance of this plugin. You can change colors. 
You can even have custom CSS and that's really great. Again, I'm not going to cover these little options. You can just check it for yourself. You can also change this style for your social share icons. And even this plugin has marketing features so it can send emails to your users and do marketing for you based on the wish list that they have. But what we are interested here it is this wish list section that allows you to customize your wish list. So here we have this wish list button. Of course, you can change the positioning of the button and change it from icon to text only or maybe icon and text. So let's just set it to icon and text and maybe change the color into red. We have both the icon style and color style. And then we can, of course, change the icon itself. So let's just change it into something else. We also do have custom SVG that you can just put there and have your own custom icon, but I'm not going to use this for this tutorial. And as you can see, we have another section, very identical to this one. And this is for your archive pages. So the first part of the setting is for your single product pages, but then we have the exact same options for your archive pages, almost exact options. So if I just save changes and visit my store, you can see that for my archive pages, nothing have changed. The style is exactly the same, but for single product pages, we have this add to wish list text and also it has changed to red so we have this customization available you can also do customization for your wish list page you can change the url you can change the text when you do not have anything in your wish list and much more options available down there that we are not going to cover we also have this counter that allows you to have a counter using a shortcut. I will talk about it, but before that, uh, let's say that you have a custom template for your website and you don't want to use this setting to control the positioning of your add to wish list, but rather you want to have full control over it because you're using Elementor and it has a theme builder and maybe you have created the theme for your website using the theme builder you have custom templates and you just want to position this wherever you want and integrate it with your theme builder this is totally possible and i'm just going to show you how you can do it very easily so all we have to do is just of course create a new template because we want to have a template i have this custom header and you can just do um, the counter for the header but here if i just bring single product and click on add new and let's just bring this template and insert it okay. And here we have it. And now what we can do is to just simply add it to all my products. So let's just save it. And now if I refresh, we have it available. And as you can see, we have our old button, but we want to integrate it into our design. So the first step is to just turn off this default positioning of the button. So all you have to do is to just bring your setting. And let's just before that close all these tabs, we do not need them. So if I just bring my setting, my wishlist setting, we have another special positioning and that's shortcut. So down there, of course, we have add to card, before card, bottom, and we have this use shortcut. So when I select this, it's just going to give me a shortcut and I have to use that shortcut in my template. So now if I just 
refresh and bring one of my products, you can see that we do not have the button because we have to manually use the source code and create the button. So now I can just bring the single product template and let's just uh, create a sample product because we have this problem down there because we do not have any product by default. So we are just getting these errors. So if I just bring setting and preview setting, and let's just grab a random product and click on apply and preview. And now it's okay. We do have the product and we are no longer getting the errors. So here, if I just search for shortcut, I can just grab a shortcut, put it anywhere that I like, and then simply paste the shortcut from more convert. Then it's just going to display my button here. And then of course I have access to margin, padding, custom CSS, and any option that Elementor has to provide. And that's really nice. So I can just put it anywhere in my design and use these features. Now, this is not the only way you can do it. There is another better way probably in Elementor and that's using the dedicated widget available to you. So I, I can just simply grab this widget and put it in the place that I want. So I have full control over the position of my button. I can even create a new column and put it there. So I have full control and also I have more options here when I'm using the widget. For example, I can turn on this default style that is going to use the default styling of my theme. I can change the text and icon font and other options here, which are not available when you are using the short code, but rather you should change them from the setting. I can change the icon color and border color and background color, and I can even set a hover color. So when you hover over it, the color is going to change. So you have all of these options available to you and full control over it. So now I'm just going to click on update. And now if I refresh and bring a product, you can see that I have this button and when I hover over it, it's yellow. This is not the best design in the world, but you get the idea and you know how to change it. Now, this is the counter that I wanted to talk about. Now, it allows you to have a counter that shows the number of products. You can set a menu here and it's just going to display it in the menu, but you also do have source code and you now know that you can use a short code in your header if you're using a custom header builder. And now if I just add some other products to my wish list, you can see that this counter is just going to increase. And also I have this widget here that I can just see. So that's really nice. And of course you have this short code that you can just use if you're using a page builder to design. For example, here on my templates, I did create a custom template for my header. And even uh, if you're using other themes and not a page builder, you can simply bring the customizer and put it inside your menu or any kind of a widget because you always can put a shortcut in your widgets and that's really great. So we are not just going to use this because we have a custom header and not something that we can customize from there. Now I'm just going to talk about the premium version and what you can do with it. So in the next section, we are going to take a look at the premium version of this plugin. So now I have installed the premium version of this plugin and we are going to see what other features we get. Of course, we do have this month list and wait list added to our menu, as well as our other sections and also the premium options being unlocked. Now, we are not getting any difference here. Our wish list is working as we expected. 
uh, but we can just use the new features that are unlocked from the premium version. So if I just bring my admin panel, you can see that we have some other new features added to this plugin. For example, we have this wait list and multi list, two other features that are added. And also we have other sections that you can just experiment. But what we are interested here is this multi list. So if I just click on this multi list, we have the section. Now this is turned off by default. We are just going to turn it on and customize it. Now, what it allows you to do is to let your users create different lists and have a name for each one of them and a description, make them public or private and save different products in different lists. Now, by default, we have this merge to wish list option, but I'm just going to turn it off. This is a really cool option, but First, I want to show you how it works without this option because this is a newer option added to this plugin. So when you have it turned off, you have a button for your multi list. So if I just bring my page, you can see that we have this icon for my multi list. And also I do get it in my single product pages. Nice overlapping with my magnifier, but you can just simply fix it by changing the position of it and save changes. So now if I refresh, you can see that we have this little icon there on the left. I can just click on it and it allows me to create a list, give it a name, give it a description, decide whether it's public or private, and then save my products into it. And of course, you can customize this button the way we did it for the wishlist button. So we have all that familiar options. But if I turn on this merge to wish list, this is a newer feature. We are not getting two separate buttons, but we only have a single button that you can just click on. And then it's just going to show you the default my wish list. And also you can create a new list or search your list. So these two functionalities are united into a single button and you can just create different leads uh, right off the bat and without any separate button. And that's a really cool. And uh, when you have this option, of course, when you add your counter, you simply get uh, your different leads and different items that are available in each list. And that's it, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you like this tutorial, Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more WordPress content. And like always, you can reach out from the link in the description.